So to start my frog, we're going to start to thread at the back of the hook. And we're going to go just to where it starts to make the bend down. We're going to put a weed guard in. And you don't want the weed guard sticking up too high on top and interfering with the feathers. So we want to make sure that we start it after we've gone over the bend of the hook. The material I'm using is a Mason hard type leader material in 20 pound. It's being a hard material, meaning it doesn't flex easy. So when it's down here as the weed guard, it's going to keep things from fouling the hook. So we're going to put the Mason in right there where it's just over the bend of the hook where anything laying flat out the back is not going to touch the weed guard. Get a couple of good wraps over it and I'm just going to hold it straight out. And as I wrap, I'm going to let the thread pull it down. That way it runs right down the bank of the back of the hook shank. Once we're about, oh, not quite halfway down, we're going to call that good. Go back up to the top and set our, our uh, weed guard material back in our materials keeper here. Now, when you're doing a weed guard, it's always a good idea to remember to put some kind of a head cement on it because you don't want teeth or different things cutting this thread up and having your weed guard come loose. Then you have to basically cut it off. You can keep fishing, but it won't be as, uh, it won't be a weedless fly. So we'll get some cement on there now before we have feathers get in the way and block up the, the uh, or soak up the head cement. Once we have our cement on our weed guard, I'm going to put in a little bit of nylon or poly material. And this is going to represent a little bit of blood maybe coming off the back of the frog like it's injured. So I'm going to wrap that around my thread, just pull it around it. And if I hold this up away from the hook shank as I wrap, it will stay on top of the hook shank. I don't want it going around to the sides. I want it to stay right over the top and I'm wrapping down to right to that spot where my weed guard starts. Just about like that. So it'll be pointed slightly down in the water. It'll lay in the water and look like a little bit of blood maybe coming off an injured frog. So next I'm going to take some hackles and I've taken some grizzly that I didn't use for anything, the big stuff off the top of a grizzly cape, and dyed it olive. And I'll explain how to do that in another video. But I'm just going to pull off four of these all at once. They're pretty much a match. The reason you take them and keep them all together and do a batch at once is you want them to be as uniform as you can possibly get them. Because if you put legs on the back on this side and legs on this side that are maybe different or different quality, it can cause the fly to spin when you cast it and create a real problem. So we're going to measure, and I want a little bit more legs than the length of the body. So I'm going to measure about that long. So that's enough. So I'm going to go out to here and I'm going to cut those off. Now, keeping all these equal, I'm going to go to the back here and I'm going to pull off a few of the stems or a few of the fibers off the back of the stems. So once I've got the hackle fiber stripped off, I'm going to take a pair and I'm going to want to lay these across the top. Well, since the fibers are round or the stems are round, they'll want to roll under the pressure of the thread. So if you take a pair of smooth jawed pliers, they don't have serrations on them or anything, and you go perpendicular to the feather, you want the feather to be up and down, the pliers to be running out. Now what that does is it gives us a flat section to wrap onto the top of the hook. And I'm going to lay these across, across the top of the hook shank like that. Then when I go over them, they're going to want to lay right down the back of the fly. Just like a perfect little pair of legs. Now I'm going to do that with another pair for the other side. Same exact process. We're going to take the pair of legs, get them evened up there. There we go. Hold them up and down. Then I'm going to flatten them on top like this. Once those are flattened, they should lay right across the top of the fly going the other direction, crossing the first ones I put on. Wrap over those. And that gives you a nice set of perfectly formed legs out the back of the fly. I'm going to wrap up over those securely to make sure they stay there. It doesn't really even hurt at this point to put a little drop of head cement. 
right on top of those because thread when it gets wet can stretch and it stretches out and then that allows the stems to pull on out of the fly. So next I'm going to take some of the long hackles that aren't as wide maybe necessarily as good for legs but are still really long and nice. Pull a couple of those out. There we go, there's two. Now these I'm going to take and match the tips up grab them by the tips and flare the rest of the feather out. I don't want to pull the tips off. I just want to flare them out like that from back, from behind them, so I can have a nice flaring hackle when I tie them on. Now I'm going to take the tips. I'm just going to lay them right down the hook shank and wrap over them. That glue's still wet, so they'll get in there a little bit, and uh, that'll help seal those in there and make sure they stay secure. Now, we need to find out how much space we've got to work with here. So we're going to take one of our popper heads and we're going to do a little measurement. That shows me how much room I have back here to put other stuff on the hook. So I want to make sure there's a good thread covering on the hook. So I'll just go over that with my thread, measure that, and then I got a little bit more room to go there. So that's about how far back I want the hackle to come up to. Now it never hurts to have a hackle come a little farther up and have this head push it toward the back when you put it on. So that's about right, right there. So I'm going to put a half hitch on that so it stays in one place, so I know my measuring point. I'm going to take these two hackles and I'm going to grab the really longest stuff that I really may not want in there, starting to get a little fuzzy looking and a little ugly. So we'll just take and slide that off. Now I'm going to flare these fibers out. Once those are all flared out, I can twist it a little bit. I want to twist it a lot. This is just for the security so they, they flare out, but also they uh, don't, don't get matted up. And I'm going to start, every time I go around, I'm going to pull the previous wrap back so I'm not matting any fibers down on the body of the fly. Because I want this to look like a pretty bulky frog body. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just spacing my way one after the other up to where I get to the front where I have that thread tied off. And I know that's my finishing spot. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that body. Now that gives us a really good hackle that's going to move in the water. And mainly what you want in a good frog imitation is something that's going to slide along and push a lot of water with it and get the fish to notice. So I'm going to go in and clip those stems since I've got them tied off well and pull all the fibers back and make a few more wraps to get those stems down. And I'm going to go up to the front and I'm going to cover the entire rest of the front shank here with some thread. So we've got our legs our body and our hackle in there, our fuzzy hackle for the body. Next, we're going to put in some legs. Now, for this, any green silicone, this happens to be uh, Hairline's Barred Grizzly in olive, and or yellow pearl flake, I'm sorry. We're going to take three of these and just break three of these fibers off from the rest of the stack. And I'm just going to take those and I'm going to do a simple overhand knot. Just go over the top, pull those three through, pull it out like that. Once again, go to the other end and you don't want to stretch this and try to stretch it to the other end because you'll wind up with one that's straight and one that's not. So I like to just let them hang so I can get a hold of them at the other end. Again, those are all pretty close. Going to do just a simple overhand knot. One time through the hole and pull them tight. That gives us feet. So now to be uniform, we're going to put the knots side by side and go out. I'm just going to clip just randomly. Give them good long legs. couple of them stuck together there. There we go. So now we've got matching feet for our frog. So to make the feet and legs work, 
and go in. We just want to hang them down so they're even. I still have, and they're still connected in the middle, so I'm just going to go up and just kind of let them hang there, and I'm just going to cut them apart. Now I've got two frog legs. So now I want the frog legs to equal the length of the body. So I'm going to take and measure from just behind the eye of the hook back to just about the bend of the hook. And that's where the knot is on my frog legs. If you get them too long, they can foul in the hook. So once I have that measured, I'm going to clip the remaining part off. I'm going to start right there where I had the thread measured from and wrap over them. And I'm just letting them stick out the back on the side closest to me. Once I get this side done, I'll just change sides, come over here. Knot goes about to the back of the bend of the hook. And about here where my finger is is where my thread was. So I'll just cut them off right there. Now it's just a matter of, you want to turn the feet so the feet are out. And once that's done, you just lay them in there beside the hook shank on the side closest to the camera and go back over them. So there's our two pairs of equal feet. Now, usually building up bulk on a body will give you fits when you're going to put a head over it. But I'm going to show you how to do it so it actually works to your benefit. Just coating over that with thread. I get back, back to the middle. I'm just going to tie this off with a couple half hitches. Cut my thread and, and then I'll show you how to prepare the head to go on this fly. So to prepare the heads to go on the hooks, we need a candle We need as a source of heat. We've got some different heads sitting there and a bodkin, basically your needle and a stick. And like some of my other flies, I'm going to start with this and I'm going to go as straight down as I can and I'm going to put it right in the center of the front of the hook or the front of the head. I like to have that red a little bit back so I have more green in front to make it look kind of like a little gill or something. Once you get it started in the front, if you hold the head parallel to the table kind of and the needle parallel and just work your way back and forth and push, that needle will come through hopefully right square in the back of the uh, head and that's where we want it to be. So now all we do is we're heating the, the bodkin itself, not the head. When it gets hot needled in, we're just gonna pull it back out and that will melt the hole completely through that uh, will slide onto the hook. Now the, the head is ready. I'm just gonna take the back side because I want the red to be toward the back. And this is just a, a rough dry fit to make sure everything's gonna go on before we start mixing epoxy up. And I'm just gonna put that eye of the hook right in the hole in the back and twist and just try to make sure that the eye of the hook comes out the hole in the front where we intended it out like that so that once again is just a dry dry fit to make sure everything's going to work and it's going to go on there without problems before we mix epoxy so let's get some epoxy ready and i'll show you how to do that part and while the camera was off i mixed up a little bit of five minute epoxy and i'll use five minute on these because they go pretty quickly and i can do five or six of them before the five minute epoxy sets so I'm just going to take a little bit on my bodkin here and put it around the front of the head and take a head that I've already dry fitted to this so I know it's going to fit. I'm going to just start and twist it and by twisting it you spread the epoxy all the way around the thread and all the way around inside the eye of the hood or the uh, head. Whoop, a little too far. There we go. Then I'm going to look to the front and turn it until everything gets perfectly lined up. Make sure the leg is in the right direction. That one's just going to go to the side until it dries. These are the eyes I like on my frogs. They're five millimeter yellow and they're doll eyes, plastic doll eyes. They have a post on the back. You can get them at craft and hobby stores and online. And what we need to do, since we're going to make a little hole in the head of the fly to insert the eyes, we want to leave a little bit of a post. So I will cut them off with just a tiny amount still on there, like that. So that will go into the hole on the fly head that we're gonna make. 
and allow them to easily stick to and stay put on the heads of the flies. Once the epoxy is dry, holding the head on, we need to make marks to figure out where we're going to put the eyes. I always used to have trouble with this part. I'd get them on there and they'd look sideways or twisted and not quite right until I figured out a simple, real simple method. This is a fine point Sharpie. It just so happens to be on a, on a half inch hook frog that if you lay the frog like this with the point of the hook absolutely straight up and the head flat on the table and you go from the side and you just do that with your Sharpie, go around the other side do that with your sharpie you now have marks on the eyes that are exactly equal you're using the actual the, the height of the fly and this to make that work the, the the spacing works out just right if for some reason the eyes are too low you need them moved up you just put something underneath your frog to raise it up so it makes the right mark on the other side of it if the eyes are too high on the frog you find something to raise the pen up to make it lower but that's an easy way to mark exactly where I'm going to put those eyes on the frog. Since the head is now dry, the epoxy is set, and that head is stable, I'm going to make the holes for the eyes. Now what I've got is a piece of wire, it's actually a welding rod, that is just about the same diameter as the posts on the back of the eyes. And the reason is I'm going to melt little holes in that foam to match the eyes that I cut the little stems that I cut on the back of the eyes. Don't need to go in very far, but I want it to be about the same diameter. So I'm going to take my candle sitting down here. I'm going to heat the end of the rod up. And this is one of the few times I'm going to use a hot iron on the foam while it's already on the hook. Because if you mess it up now, you're taking it off and putting a new head on. So get that good and hot. Go to where my black mark is on the side and just melt a little hole right there for the eye. Go to the other side, heat my rod up. It doesn't get red hot, it just gets warm enough it's going to melt the foam. And I'm just going to go straight in, melt another little eye. Now since that's done and I happen to have a little bit of epoxy, I'm going to put the eyes on. And the way this is done is just a small drop on a bodkin right in the hole. You don't want it too much because if you get too much in there, it'll squish out and it will uh, go around and there's the head of the fly. Then we go to the other side before we put that first eye in. I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy in this side. Not like that. So that's just a simple matter of taking the eye where the hole is, where the epoxy is in it setting the stem on the back that I trimmed down right in that epoxy and pushing it down in the hole and then going to the other side and doing the same thing. Easier said than done sometimes. About like that. Now you want the eyes to be held in as flat and flush as possible while they're drying. So an easy way to do that is with some masking tape. Take our piece of masking tape and we're going to make this frog look like he's been to the dentist because we're just going to go up on the back side and hold that eye in and around the front side and squeeze him at the top. Now he's a little bandaged up but those eyes are going to be held in place until they dry. Once your epoxy is set, to get this off we're just going to run the scissors in between them, between the layers and snip the tape. And then pull it off, there we go. And that leaves us a nice evenly matched set of eyes. Up to this point, the weed guard has just been back here on the material keeper. Now we're gonna to wanna to attach it as the last thing we do on this fly. So we're gonna take the fly out of the vise and we're going to put the weed guard in the vise as well as the hook. Now you don't have to worry about the vise crushing the weed guard 
because the hook is slightly larger. So there's actually some play in the weed guard there. So we're going to flip it over now. And the way that I always determine the weed guard length on this fly is once you have a little bit in front of the, or above the point of the hook, so you're going to get good protection there from getting hung up. If you just go down and say, well, right at the front face there, if I cut it off flush here, that's the right measurement for this fly. This is just on years of experience tying it. So we're going to clip it off there. Now it's got a little knobby end on the end from the nippers, but that's a good thing. That's going to help hold it in place when we're ready to epoxy it in. So now we're going to take our bodkin, and I've got my ever-present candle going down here. I'm just going to hold the tip of the bodkin in the flame and get it good and warm. And I'm going to punch a hole in the head of the fly to hold the weed guard. I'm going to want to go right behind the red, or right in front of the red, and then straight in. I'm going at about a 45 degree angle there, because that's the direction the weed guard is going to come from. So once that hole is set, if we just do a little dry fit here, we'll see that that weed guard is going to go right in there, slide it all the way in as far as I can. And that's going to be a really good fit on that weed guard. It gives us space between the monofilament and the hook point. And if anything, might be just a little bit too long, but I can solve that by just pulling it back out now while I have the chance and clipping just a little bit off. You don't want to cut a whole lot at once because this is the first thing you tied in on the fly. So if you mess it up, it means retying the whole fly or having a, a fly without a weed guard. So now I've got a little bit of epoxy mix, just a tiny little bit here. Put some on the point of my bodkin and put it down in the hole where the weed guard is going. A little bit more in there. Now the weed guard, we'll just push it right down in the hole. And if there's any concern about it staying there while the epoxy is setting up, if it looks like it's going to bounce around, like then that one looks like it might, I'm just going to go back to putting a piece of tape over the top, and pulling it down on one side, down the other side, and sticking it to the foam eyes, the foam head. That way it will hold that weed guard in place till the hook set or till the epoxy sets. And you can see that that weed guard is very nicely aligned with the hook point. So that should do a really good job of keeping this fly weed free. Once that epoxy on the weed guard has had time to set up, we can take our tape off and there's a finished Maholka foam frog.